Here we go. What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. And this is not an episode of the Bourbon Talks. This is an episode of sitting around on Sunday talking about why I didn't bring you a video <laughs> of one of my project videos. Uh, I want to say hi to everybody. Uh, I want to say hi to the chat real quick before we get started. Looking at these comments, we got uh, Mike Hawk Hertz first. Yeah, buddy, you're first. Me saying my man. I mean, I'm, you know, my man, you're, you're whoever's, I mean, you're your own man. Let, let, let's move on. Uh, Wilson Singleton is second. Yes, you are. He's also third with the comment. Uh, I'm hoping my money is full tomorrow for this cab. Got my notification that we could go for it. Fingers crossed, right? <laughs> when you can figure out the arcade one up pre-order situation, you let me know because I don't think I got my mind totally wrapped around it yet. Kev Gret, 150th. No, nah, you're like uh, fifth. You're fine. You're fine. Uh, howdy, fellas. God bless. Howdy, fellas. God bless indeed. So what is going on with y'all? Yeah, I, you know, I wanted to get a video out. I usually get some kind of project video out on the weekends. And for whatever reason, <laughs> this week just didn't, it just didn't quite happen. So I'm going to go ahead and let you in. So I teased, well, this guy right here, this little Gallagher cabinet. I'm going to see if I, I told you I had a board on the way. We're going to uh, break out board. We're going to break out and uh, have an HDMI with the stock screen. That was my goal. So I went to Ada Fruit and I got this really nice, this is a, listen, this is a really nice board. Okay. This is a nice board, good quality. You know, you got the, all, you, all the traces. I mean, you got you get good components. And the thing was, you wanted to go with a 40 pin. I have to have a 40 pin uh, ribbon cable connection is what you got to have for your stock uh, eight inch screen. So I figured this might work. So what I did is I got the thing in and, uh, you know, I made sure that the orientation of the cable was correct as best I could. And I plugged it in and I did uh, just my USB micro. So I put five volts on this thing and plugged in my HDMI and plugged it in the wall and I got nothing. I got nothing. So <laughs> I said, OK, well, maybe it's just not going to work. So I take this beautiful little Adafruit board off, put the stock board back in, plug it back in and nothing. I think I just screwed up the board. Or not the board, but the uh, the screen. So all I've got is a white screen. So the backlight's on, but I can't. It's not going to play the game. It's not going to play the image. So kind of kind of screwed up there. So my big brain idea was I'm going to I'm going to go a different route. And then I tried that today, and it worked for the most part. When you see the video, you'll understand where where I, I had the uh, the mishap. But I can go ahead and give you a hint. It's not the board. It's not the board. So. What I decided to do, I'll go ahead and tell you. What the hell? If you're sitting here, if you're hanging out with me, I'll go ahead and let you know what's going on. Um, so instead of trying to use a breakout board with my stock monitor, I thought, well, I'll just get a different monitor that's going to come out with his own board. Okay, since I, since the monitor's junk, uh, the stock one, I thought I'd get a monitor and I'd get a breakout board, and then I would just do it that way. So did a bunch of work, made it fit. It looks really good. looks nice. You'll see in the video. Hopefully, you'll agree. Um plugged in the stock board and the screen power is on, but I can't get it to give me a signal. It doesn't see the HDMI. It doesn't see the component, nothing, no signal. So I got another one coming <laughs> Amazon to the rescue again. So, uh, so hopefully it's just the board and, uh, hopefully I don't have to pull that, that little monitor out, but I'm still going with the eight inch form factor. I want to keep that I, I want to keep it looking as stock as possible. I got some plans for it. You know, I'm going to try to use a PS one and, if you've watched my channel, if you were paying attention to other guys out there in the space, you saw that these things dropped to forty nine dollars. I got a second one, <laughs> so I got a second one. So I paid seventy nine for this one. Unfortunately, wrecked the screen. No big deal. Got a second one coming that I may leave stock, but I've got a second idea. Just as soon as I get jazzed about this one, I got a lit marquee coming and all that. I'm not going to tell you the game. I'm not going to tell you the theme yet, but uh, but you'll uh, you'll see in my next video. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I got, I got this other idea in my head. I got a pile of PlayStations. That's all I'm going to say. It's not going to be another PS1 powered counter It's going to be a different 
different thing. So just stay tuned. But I got to get this one straight first. But anyway, hopefully this new board will come in and I can I can uh, throw that in there, and then we can get some good video, and then I can start fussing about how I'm going to actually bring the power in and distribute the power. Uh, because these counter caves are so small, you really can't do a traditional. I mean, you could, but it's gonna be really tight, like a power strip, and then all those AC adapters, you know, where they basically take 120, convert it down to whatever they're running, five volts or 12 volts or whatever, and then you get these big bricks inside this counter cage, you're trying to keep that nice and tight. So what I want to do is take whatever I can, whatever I can start with, seven volts, 12 volts, whatever, bring that into the cab, and then have a small step down transformer. Or I can break that off into the voltages that I need to power the individual devices inside. So I'm going to have the screen. Obviously, I'm going to have the game uh, console, whatever whatever form factor that is. Once I figure out those voltages, then I should be able to break that out in a way that's going to be nice and tidy up out of the way. Um, yeah. So that anyway, so that's the plan. That's what I'm going to go with. Uh, the second one, when it comes in, uh, we'll see. We'll see if I leave that thing stock or if I mod it. I'm thinking... I don't know. I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to mod it. Just can't leave one off alone. But anyway, <laughs> so let's go back to the chat. A lot of guys coming in. A lot of people coming in. Echo Base. Salute. Damn good to see you, boys. How you doing? You're doing great things over there, keeping the love of Star Wars alive. They say, uh, I love RK 1UP stuff. Wish I had more room and more money. Yeah, and more time. Because <laughs> once you get them all, then you got to actually uh, find time to play them. But, uh, you know, that's, that's only half the fun. They have this modern. Congratulations on getting to 1K. It was because everybody in this chat is because everybody's been supporting the channel for, for a long time that I got there, and I really do appreciate it. Not monetized yet, but we'll work on that. Uh, that's up. E, that's up. E, hat's up. I'm not going to judge you, Brad, but maybe you want to check on that. Oh, there, there. What's happening? Yeah, it makes a little more sense. Makes a little more sense. Everybody saying hi to each other. Tony C. Uh, Geek Sales on eBay has a monitor solution for the Gen 2 countercade. Uh, yeah, yeah. You'll see. I basically follow that, but instead of instead of going, I guess I and maybe you're talking about maybe you're talking about what I'm actually going to end up doing. But Tulsa Arcade, you know, they have the standard, which they're a great company. Don't get me wrong. They actually commented on one of my videos, and I had to explain. Listen, I ain't trying to get a dig on nobody here. I'm just talking about a different solution. It was about the 19-inch monitor. Caused a little bit of controversy. <laughs> but but no, they, they were really cool. Um, I just wanted to kind of plead their case and say, hey, listen, you know, we're backed up for a reason. And I said, yeah, because you're a great company. That's why. You make a good product. But they make something for the uh, for the countercades. And it's it's sort of your standard. Okay, you, you, got the, you got the monitor mount. You get your monitor. And so what that does, that adds a lot of thickness. And then you end up going with Velcro on the front, you know, for your bezel. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm actually – Gonna, I'm gonna retain the thickness, if that makes sense, so that we can we can keep that the bulk of that stuff down inside this counter cave because these Gen twos are real small, man. They're really small, which is great. I like the form factor. It looks a lot better with that eight inch screen, but you got to keep all this in mind when you mod because, like on my, you know, on this baby, I mean, you've seen these videos. I've got a subwoofer in there. I've got like five different power bricks. So, you know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff, wires everywhere. I've actually done some work. When I got frustrated with this, I jumped on this, started doing some wire management, some cable management. So you'd all be proud. Some of you have been saying, hey, Fox, when you tied, tidy that up a little bit. <laughs> and you were right. It was kind of rough. It was kind of rough. Uh, Counter Kate is on the way. Wife is a big, well, see? Oh, well, this is a perfect stream for her then. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, $49. I'm sure everybody's got two of them because, as we'll see in a minute, we're going we're gonna to dip over to the uh, Walmart website. They're sold out. I actually checked this morning. And they're sold out. Uh, Brad O'Connell, modding is fun. Modding is fun. It's a it's a challenge um, because there's several different ways to do things, and um, you know, it's, it's like, how do you want to skin that cat? The original plan, Mr. Chip, Mr. Chip, how you doing? Uh, the original plan was to come up or try to locate a breakout board for the stock monitor on the Galaga countercade. And then throw a PS1 in there because it actually fits inside. And then play, and because you, know, you get that vertical orientation of the monitor, shooters, vertical shooters. Um, dedicated just for that. The PS1 has some great vertical shooters, and I've got that catalog already. I thought, well, let, you know, let's do something different besides a pie, you know, or, uh, 
or Pandora's box, you know, something a little different instead of a 60 and one, something that, and then you're going to get those PlayStation one exclusives. You know, I, I have a decent collection of ROMs. I don't have all the ROMs. I don't, I don't know that we all have the ROMs that we really want at all of them anyway. And, uh, so this, but I do have some of the games, uh, some of the discs, uh, instead of those, instead of those ROMs. So that, um, that, uh, that's, that's the way I'm going to go to try to get the play of the games that I want to play. Uh, Brad says, I have a tiny arcade. Plays like 3,000 games uh, from China. It's awesome. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but yeah, I think I'm familiar. There's, there's a lot of... I can play Tekken on it. Oh, so you can play up to PS... It can emulate up to PS1? Nice. Nice. I've seen a few of those um, all-in-one Pandora solutions where it's a, a sort of a miniature, kind of like a, a bar top. Um, but that's got like a nice screen right like a 12 inch screen 12 inch monitor not this little dinky eight inch that we got here uh the eight inch is so tiny but of course i bought one it could, <laughs> of course you did because you're like me you couldn't resist yeah the eight inch it's it's you know it's fine for what it is but trust me after digging pretty deep into it blowing the whole thing apart it lends itself well to modding there's a lot of solutions out there um for that monitor so uh, I'm bad at mods. I'm just going to throw a handle and make it run on bat. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Uh, that you're technically modding. If you put a handle on it and uh, throw a, a battery in there and make it a portable setup, an actual truly portable setup, you're modding, man. Um, modding is there's, there's variations and, and gradations within the modding community. You can go wide open crazy. I like to sort of focus on plug and play solutions um, because there's a lot of guys out there doing a lot of videos about you know, uh, the, the pies and, you know, having, having it, what they do is so sweet. It looks so slick. It looks so nice, but you got to have that library of ROMs. What if you don't have the ROMs, but what if you're like me and you've got a bunch of consoles that have the games that you want to play? There's a, you know, the PS2 was a port machine. That's why I chose it for my, you know, my, uh, my, the modding that I did on the street fighter cap. Uh, it, they have the collections, you know, crazy. Uh, I've got the midway one, two, and three. Those PS2 discs, those compilations, that's there. That's, I mean, you throw that in a, 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 a an arcade cabinet sort of uh, form factor, and it's just, it's, it's simple. It's instant right there. If you, well, if you got a PS2 kicking around. What is up, everyone? Go Cowboys. Go Cowboys. I live in, uh, I live in Kentucky, but I'm originally from Texas. So you have to, and, you know, I remember the Oilers leaving. So uh, Cowboys were just, my default. Um, so that's, that's, that's why I'm, I'm making excuses. I'm, <laughs> I'm making excuses. I know they're the best team in the world, but they're, yeah, they're my favorite. So Cowboy throw a die. Mm. How much small is your physical size? So uh, this is 16 inches tall. Um, I think the original one was 20 something inches. Sorry. I know that's, I know I don't have the, I don't have the, uh, the, uh, the the specs on me right now, but but you've gone these counter caves, The second gen is shorter and narrower, more narrow. Sorry, um, yeah. So it's it's overall it's a big, but it but it makes sense. In I mean, if you're going to use that eight inch screen, this form factor makes so much more sense. It was way too big for the screen size that you had before. It was not good. It was not good. I got my Galaga Order forty nine uh, before they sold out. Yeah. I ordered the LCD converter for it. Now looking for a custom Gen 2 control panel. I'm going to make one. Uh, I'm going to make one and see if I can, because I'm using the PS2. I've got a PS2 enco uh, encoder with that, you know, that, that cable that's going to plug into the front of the PS, or, I'm sorry, PS1, in front of the PS1. I'm going to try to get away with just start button, select button, and then the two action buttons, the X and the O button, because the X will be, um, the X should be fire, and then the O is going to be your bomb. And then you can also, those are your two uh, command buttons too. X is enter, O is to back out. So I think I can get away with just those, but we'll I'll have to play around with it and see. You don't want to do a bunch of buttons on these uh, cabs. I mean, you can, but it gets really tight. And then the issue becomes the depth of it because you're, you're looking so, because you're so shallow, you know, you're going to have another half inch. I've got the control panel off. You're going to have another half inch of height here. But if you go with like a big, you know, half button, not, uh, you know, sand is going to be a little, you know, a little more narrow, but if you go with a, st uh, a full size hat button and that's sticking down there, by the time you hook the micro switch on the bottom of it, and then you get your wires hooked up, you're going to have, it's going to be so, there's going to be a lot of stuff down there. And 
that's kind of a limitation I'm putting on myself using the PS1 because that's going to take up a lot of real estate because I'm going to have, you know, wires coming to the back of the PS1, the control, pl uh, pl uh, the control uh, port on the front, that plug is going to be uh, there. So it's going to add a lot of width to the uh, to the machine. So, hey, man, thanks. Congrats on subs. Thank you. I appreciate it. I owe all that to y'all. all that to y'all. Everybody saying what's up. So let me, uh, so real quick, uh, while I got y'all here, uh, we talked about the, we talked about me making excuses for not having a, a video this weekend. <laughs> we talked about that a little bit. Um, so that's uh, thinking of putting a Pi three. Yeah, see Pi three. I mean, that's probably the way to go if you've got the ROMs you want. If you're familiar with the software, if you can get that interface, uh, if you can run Retro Pi and get that the way the front end. If you can get the front end to look the way you want it to look, um, you know, I, I've also thought about using like a Pi zero. Uh, to just boot up to a single ROM, have a dedicated cab, but uh, it's 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 a lot of it's a lot of work. Not not impossible, and and if done correctly, it, man, it just looks slick. But I'm gonna try this. Um, that kind of kid riser looks good. Man, did it, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, it did, it did look really good. Um, I have made. I started. I'm trying to remember the name of the company. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I. You know, my first cab was a full-size Street Fighter cab, and I got rid of that because, like everybody else, you finally get the cab of your dreams, and it's huge and it's heavy. So I ran a uh, Pandora's box in it for a while. So the stock board, but I ran a, a Pandora's box, and I ended up just selling it and uh, went with a bar top. I can't remember the name of it now. I'm, I'm spacing now on the name. But I went with a bar top, and then I made a custom riser, and it's all Alien vs. Predator. It's one of my videos, one of my older videos, um, one of my first builds. But, um, but yeah, I kind of, kind of followed that same thing where I did the, uh, the bar top and then the riser, uh, but his, but his turned out really nice. The artwork really, really, uh, kicks it off. We'll be here Tuesday. Yeah. Mine, uh, mine should show up Monday. Mine should show up Monday. And, uh, you know, while we're on the, uh, wow. Footy. What's up, man? Yo, how you doing? Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. You're an average gamer. Love your all. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. This listen, guys. This turned out. You know how you, you know how you think about something in your head, and you're like, well, let me. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. And you kind of listen. One of the other reasons I went with the PS2 is because I knew I could get these wheels for cheap. These are not force feedback. They actually plug into the. They're not USB either. They plug into the front of the console. So I figured, well, listen. I'll get a couple of these. They're like twenty bucks a piece. If this doesn't work out, eh, it's no big loss. But it actually worked out really nice. I mean, it really, really did. This, this is so much fun. I mean, I, you know, racing cabs are fun anyway, but this worked out really well. I mean, if you see in the video, we're having fun, we're driving, and it's, uh, you know, we're not hitting each other. And the 19-inch monitor that I got uh, just makes it that much better. So, so yeah, I've been, uh, I've been rocking on that. I really wish that I would have chosen a third-gen cab to do that though, because the speakers. If you, if you want to make several different control panels, which is was kind of my, my thought process. I'll make a driving control panel and then a fighting and then a, you know, um, and then like a four player, or six player. Or something. But every time you do that, you got to put another set of speakers in the damn control panel because there's no speaker support panel up top. <sighs> yeah, it kind of sucks. But, uh, but no, thank you. I appreciate it. It's, uh, yeah, it was, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun just building that and having it come together. And it, it just worked out nice. All right. So before we get to, Get too far. Let me go ahead and I wanted to start actually before we talk about the main event, which is the Midway Legacy Cabinet. I wanted to actually share something with you. I haven't seen this yet. I've heard about it. Every other people have talked about it and commented about it. Uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge reveal trailer. I figured we would watch it together. Some of you have already seen it, I'm sure. Um, but we're gonna watch it together. Let me know if you can hear this and uh, see what you think. All right, let me maximize this. As you can see, I don't know if you can see, I've got the four player, so I'm a Ninja Turtles fan. Born in the 70s, grew up in the 80s, so I remember the Turtles uh, and the Turtle Mania. Loved the first two games. I bought the HD remix uh, for the PS3. So let's see what we got. Yeah. 
Hmm. Well, the art's on point. Are you going to have April O'Neil doing karate now? Or? <laughs> that, that was nice. Oh, nice. So you got back, you got some of the old... Uh, Okay, show me some gameplay. Technodrome, awesome, but where's the gameplay? Is he going to show me any gameplay? Okay. All right, so it's a little bit of a different take. All right. This looks good. This looks good. So the turtles are kind of small. All right, let's kill this. So that looks pretty good. Um, hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Does it look? Uh, it doesn't look. It doesn't look bad. The turtles are kind of. The, the turtles are kind of small. But that works out when you look at the proportions of like Bebop and Rocksteady, how they're bigger. Uh, I was gonna, these are the same guys that did uh, Streets of Rage Four, right? I freaking love that game. I bought the physical copy of that. Uh, yeah, your average gamer says uh, tiny. Yeah, they, a little small, yeah. Uh, looks promising. Tommy, what's up, brother? Hey, it's Snow Dub in the house? There he is, Snow Dub. What's up, brother? Thanks. For, hey, appreciate it, man. Thanks. I'm working on it, working on it. Good to see you, Tommy. Thanks, man. Uh, I need this yesterday. <laughs> I need this yesterday. <laughs> got to have it. Your average gamer has got to have it. Um, I think. I mean, I think. It, it, just to be fair, it looks. It looks good. It looks good. You. I. I get a little cautious, you know, nowadays because it, they. They always seem to find a way to mess us up. But I believe these are the same guys that did Streets of Rage Four, and I love that. I bought the physical copy. I got the. Uh, I should. I actually got that in the living room, but I, for PS4, I freaking love that thing. Um, I got the the uh, the one with the old Genesis cartridge as a case. That thing was awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks good. Needs to be I arcade. Yeah, there you go. Um, and if John can handle I arcade. <laughs> okay, so, uh, well, I also wanted to, while I got you here, I'm going to go ahead and share this. Here we go. Four days left. This is what, this is my pre-order. I'm trying to hide all my personal information. <laughs> you can't see. There's a 19K box. You can't, uh, you see that. Yeah, it's, um, four days. 319, awaiting product availability. I have not got an email, uh, you know, saying, hey, it's on its way. So, but so far, so good. Let's see if this holds. I I really hope it does. I would think that by now I'd have some kind of an email or something saying that it was delayed or it was being pushed. When I had my, uh, my Marvel versus Capcom cab, that thing kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And I had it, I had it reserved for probably four months, I think five months before I finally got the thing. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, fingers crossed, man, but should be here this week. So this is going to be a good week. We got, uh, we got Zack Snyder's justice league. I don't know if y'all are fans of that, but, uh, you know, the Snyder cut is releasing the four hour version of that movie. So that's going to be great Get to see that this week. Our cabs should be showing up this week. At least mine is. Let me know in the comments section. If you, if you're checking, are you checking your pre-orders? Are they saying that you're going to get it this week? Because mine says Friday. 319 is what I'm seeing. No more delays? Yeah, <laughs> we'll see, right? The day ain't over yet, is it? We could all get emails Monday, tomorrow, saying, oh, sorry. No interest in the Midway Legacy Cab. Uh, not Zohan. Well, exactly. And, and Zohan hasn't approved it. Then it's, it's not worth, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. See the, the paper boy controller. So it comes with paper boy, but not the paper boy controller. You know, I don't think anybody's buying this for paper boy, but if you're going to include it on the cab, you have to, you have to think about every, every single game that's going to be included on this. You've got to think about the control scheme you have. Is it really worth putting paper boy on here? Could you put something else on here? You know, I mean, it's. I think. I don't think. I don't think it's an unfair critique. I think it's something to to, to keep in mind. Uh, 
So yeah, so I've got 319. Who who, who else has got that? Don't forget the dead cells on Friday. Yeah, I know, I know. I, we only have so much money. We only have so much money. <laughs> I'll be watching Justice League this week. Yeah, man, listen, listen, listen. I so so everybody was talking about. I got a bunch of buddies. I got a bunch of friends. They're all about the the Snyder cut. Snyder cut. Snyder cut. I like just. I, I like you know Zack Snyder. I like Man of Steel a lot. Uh, when when the original Justice League came out, I was like, man, what the what is all this? Um, Batman v Superman. Uh, that was pretty good, but a little, I was, I was, I was like, ah, this is not as good as it could have been. But then when I saw the extended cut of Batman v Superman, that was better. It added a lot to it. I'm like, oh, okay. So that got me thinking about this whole Snyder cut thing. I'm like, you know what? There's probably something to that. And sure enough, when you see the movie and it was all chopped up, they had different directors like, yeah, so I cannot wait to see, I cannot wait to see Zack Snyder's full vision for the movie that he wanted the movies i mean it's four hours so he's basically two movies put together but it's gonna be awesome if you like superhero stuff definitely something uh we're seeing for sure can't wait to see that also we got the uh, oh yeah march 31st we got king kong versus godzilla i know it's dumb i know it's stupid i don't care i like it i'm looking forward to it monsters punching each other i mean what the hell is it's the most american thing even though it comes out of japan <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> what can you do? Oh man. Uh yeah, man. It's, oh yeah, wait. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <I can't. laughs> Before you <laughs> Martha, yeah. You're like, what? Martha? You were you were gonna kill this guy. And Martha was the uh was the kryptonite? Miss Batman's kryptonite? You said, Oh, your mom has got the same name that my mom. Oh, we're not gonna rehash that. Man of Steel was a great movie. I thought Man of Steel was a great movie. I know people didn't like it. I know that it's the the destruction was an issue for some people. I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, yeah, doing HBO Max just for the the uh, well, I you know, I actually did. I signed up before Wonder Woman eighty four came out. And that was a disappointment, but that was why I signed up originally. And I knew this, these Snyder Cut stuff was out there, but at the time it, it wasn't re you know really official yet. And then when I saw that, I'm like, well. Just make sure I renew that subscription because that looks badass. So I can't wait to see that. Can't wait to see Godzilla. Um, you know, it's, it, you know, I just, come on. I'm not a complicated man. I like what I like and uh, make no apologies for it. The wife and I are looking forward to Kong versus God. Thank you. My wife is not, but I am. And luckily I get kids. So they'll sit there and watch stuff with their dad. So that works out. Why did you say that now? <laughs> Martha, that could have been done better. You know, in the original comic, and I got I got the original Dark Knight comic. You know, Martha was not a thing. You know, Batman restrained himself. You know, and the point was, yeah, I'm not going to finish you off, Superman. But you just remember, you know, that it was a man, a regular man that could have that could have taken you out, but it was just Batman restraining himself. You know, keeping Superman in check. They could have done it that way. I think that would have been better. It's so awesome that you had. Uh, oh yeah, I used to have so many quarters on. Man, listen. Yeah, they, I, I, we would go and we would take, we would take probably twenty bucks and hit that change machine, and you'd have to have a sock with you or a bag or something for all those quarters. And me and my brother were gone. He was about five years younger than me, and we would take off. And this is the '90s, bro. Okay, so this is when you were trying to find that six-player X-Men out there. Where, where's, is, is that here? They got oh, it's just four player. I mean, all all the great '90s stuff. The advent of 3D games. You had the Tekkens out there. You had the Virtua Fighter, like one in the corner, like oh, and everybody was fighting over that one, trying to get there. Everybody still had two TVs. You know the CRTs. I mean, great. Um, good to see you live again, Fox. How many watch hours? Yeah, so I've got I've got a, I've got a ways to go. I think I've got about 2,900. Uh, I took that six months off. It really kind of kick me in the ass but but uh yeah so i got i got to get those back up snow dub so that's why i'm here talking to y'all great to see everybody here uh, i hate monday i hate mondays happening p dubs this week's p dubs i hate mondays happening p dubs this week p dubs what <laughs> probably reading that wrong i'm sorry are you talking about p dub he streams on monday right i hate mondays yeah that's right um 
I wonder what he's took. I'm sure he's gonna. I'm sure he's gonna touch on the midway legacy. I would imagine. Uh, he was Superman for one day. What did you expect? <laughs> yeah, get the guy a break. It's just you know. Yes, he destroyed a lot of Metropolis, but he was. To be fair, Superman Clark Kent was you know trying to stop an alien threat. I mean, it was like multiple Kryptonians that had his power. Damn, dude. I think he did okay. I think he did all right. I ain't giving Superman a hard time. Damn. Can't please everybody. Uh, One Woman 84 was hot garbage. Uh, yeah, it was it was hot garbage with a great trailer. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a great way to sum it up. You had a trailer that was like, yes, I can't wait. And then you're like, what the hell am I watching? What is what is this? What are we doing? And nobody could answer the question. I thought King of Monsters was pretty good. I thought it was. Listen, it is what it is, right? I saw, did anybody see the new, uh, the, the latest, the third Bill and Ted's movie? Bill and Ted Face Music. It was good for a Bill and Ted movie, but that's what it's supposed to be, right? It's a third movie in a trilogy. It's supposed to be a Bill and Ted movie, not, you know, some Oscar performance. So if you were expecting that, you're not, that's not, that's not what you're going to get. But, uh, but no, I mean, it's, it's good for what it is. So yeah, so King of the Monsters, I thought it was it was better than the first Godzilla. We just wanted to see more Godzilla, right? Uh, gravy pinball review. Oh, okay, check that out. Uh, but to keep this generation happy and not offended, it'll be Curious George versus Barney, and they'll talk about their feelings. They'll talk about their feelings. They won't fight. They won't even smash a city. Hey, what's up, man? Oh, uh, is that why they were saying your name? You're in my chat? Thanks for stopping by, bro. Appreciate it, man. Uh, T -dubs. Yeah, there, see, there you go. We got a celebrity in the house. Uh, Midway Cab showing up April 2nd. Okay, so we got some, so we got April 2nd. See, I got mine. Oh, man. I was like one of the last waves. To, uh, to, to get mine. I, it must be how many they had allocated per region because I, I did not, I was not on the first, I was not the first one to sign up and get it. I actually wasn't going to get it in the beginning, but then as it kept popping up, like, you know, I, I've been giving this thing, a, this cab a hard time. I've got to get one. I've got to get it in and look at it. And, you know, as bad as <laughs> I've been kind of bashing it, but you know, I like Mortal Kombat. I didn't get the first Mortal Kombat. So, you know, I got to get this one. I got to get this one. I don't care if she like, she will see Kong with me. Well, yeah. She, she will sit down and she will watch the movie with you because how many things has she made you watch? Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's uh yeah, I'm not, I'm not here to bash nobody, you know, uh, these cabinets, these wonderful things that arcade one of us is giving us is a compromise. It has to be, it can't be a one for one represent exact copy of the arcade machines we had back in the day. What's the point? I mean, I think there would be a very niche group of people that could do that and, and afford that because, I mean, you, you'd have a $2,000 cap, you know, and it'd have one game on it, <laughs> you know, unless you went like the, uh, uh, unless they went the uh, uh, Neo Geo route and you could, you, could, you could have slots, you know, different games. But I play a, a lot of Turtles, Simpsons, and Street Fighter. Yes. I really, I still wish they would have had the Konami cab. I think all of us were talking about that. The Konami four-player cab that everybody wanted. You know, you had Turtles, Simpsons, and X-Men. Licensing agreements, I'm sure that was never going to happen. Looking back on it now, okay, it was probably never going to happen, but damn it, that would have been awesome. That would have been the cab. They could have charged 600 bucks for that one. Probably everybody would have bought one. Just to have them all, have them official. Uh, but I guess the problem would be, how would you do the artwork on that one? I mean, come on. I, I guess that's probably why they were sitting around the table, you know, twirling their mustaches. You know, I'm assuming that's I'm assuming that's what John D is out to do. You know, rubbing his beard. Ha ha ha. How would you do the artwork on that one? So that might have been the deciding factor. Well, we got to have a turtles cab and an X Men cab. Maybe you could have had the same cab, but different artwork variations. I don't know. It's still it's probably still the same problem. Same problem, different day. Uh, I hear Paperboy is playable with the Star Wars joke. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? I mean, that, that was basically the same, you know, analog. Turn left and right. Yes, yeah, Superman and Lois is pretty good. I only watched uh, episode one. I got to watch two and three. But, man, I was actually shocked how good that, that show was. Because I used to watch <sighs> – I watched Batwoman to just make fun of it. 
I couldn't even get to the first season. It was so bad. The second season, I watched the first episode. I'm like, okay, this is just not, I can't even, I can't even watch this as a joke. Um, so I wasn't confident the CW could do much because I loved uh, Arrow in the beginning. Loved the Flash in the beginning. And the show's just kind of, eh, you know. Yeah, live streams will bump me up, man. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. It'll be nice. We have a question. Question. Out of all the games added to the Legacy Midway cabinet, which one are you most excited for? Of the Midway uh, cabinet itself? But are you talking about besides Mortal uh um, Mortal Kombat, I'm assuming. Um, tell you what, let's take a look real quick. Let's bring up the list, and let's all let's all just let's just let's just knock this down one at a time. And maybe we can even uh, maybe we can even rank these. Let me share my screen real quick, guys. Share the screen. Okay, sure. So let's look at. Let me scroll down here. So let's so let's assume, and I'm assuming, um, B Dubs, that you that you're you're excluding the obvious choice that would be Mortal Kombat one, two, and three, which I think two may be my favorite out of out of all three. I'm not sure, um, but there's something special about one. But anyway, so okay, so other than those, uh, okay, so you got Joust and Defender, which are classics. Out of all the other ones, I got to say, I got to go with Rampage because some of my, I, that's another one of those, Paperboy was fun. I remember Paperboy, but I have a lot of good memories about Rampage. That was another one of those game franchises that I actually ended up following because you would get Rampage and they had Rampage World. And I had, I remember the N64 version of Rampage World. And I think I even had, uh, was it, I don't know, it didn't come out on ps1 i don't believe but then in those midway compilations you had it um for the ps2 and i just that was just one you know it's one of those uh one of those things where it was a unique gameplay you know you get to tear stuff up i just said i like godzilla and king kong <laughs> so i think if you were going to exclude the mortal kombat games which is obviously the main draw um defender is a classic i like paperboy uh, but I think Rampage probably all because I think the other games, you know, Tapper and Tubin are nice uh, little nostalgia plays. But I think, you know, well, I mean, they they made a whole Rampage cage. Or no, cab, sorry, not cage. <laughs> they didn't make a cage, they made a cab. They made a whole Rampage cabinet. So, you know, I'm, I'm assuming everybody also maybe thinks about it the same way that I do. But yeah, I think Rampage is probably. You know, because I didn't have it originally, that's definitely uh, one of the main draws. Uh, but you know, I think you got—I think every game on here um, is really a winner. I mean, that's the thing. Well, bubbles. It's almost like we can't even really count bubbles. And well, to be fair, I don't know that I really played bubbles. I, I think I know of bubbles. I don't know that I've actually played bubbles. But you've got listen. Midway has the classics. I mean, you know, Capcom obviously—that's some AAA stuff there too. But Midway has some great, I mean, just some great freaking things. Uh, just their their library is so deep. It's awesome. But but no, I think I think of all of them, probably Rampage. At the end of the day, I'll play them all, but I will play Mortal Kombat and Rampage probably most. Most, for sure. Uh, Skull on in, in 3D was, oh, you saw it in 3D? Dude, I bet that was dope. I bet that was dope. Yeah, see, I mean, because because it was a Bill and Ted movie. It's a good movie, um, for what it was. I didn't want Saving Private Ryan, but but in a Bill and Ted universe, I don't. I didn't want that. Which that sounds really, God, that sounds horrible. <laughs> I just uh, DC movies are so hit and miss. That's the problem. See, okay, so I'll tell you this, Brad. You got you got their animated universe. DC's animated stuff is great. Marvel's animated stuff is hit or miss. But Marvel's movies are on point, with the exception of Captain Marvel, which was garbage. Uh, all the all the movies are good to great, and the DC movies are like great and garbage, great and what the hell is this? You know, just it is like a it's like a yo yo, and it's weird because WB owns them, so you think it's all under one house that that it would be more consistent, either consistently bad or consistently good. But no, they're all over the place. 
Uh, just you and your parents saw that movie. Yeah, well, <laughs> just just me and my parents. Uh, Wizards of War. Uh, yeah, it's like I said, I'm gonna play them all. I'm gonna play them all. But what's got the more the, the biggest replay value? You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be Rampage and Mortal Kombat. You know, I mean, I've already got my you know my sister in law talking smack about Mortal Kombat since she's gonna beat me. I mean, like 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 not even playing around, like straight face, like you're going down. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Let's go grind, playing around. She'll probably beat me, though. Mm. She'll probably beat me, which is sad. If she does, if she does beat me, I I won't uh, I won't tell you. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. I have to check my order. Yeah, everybody, check your order real quick. Let me know if somebody's getting something crazy. Let me know if some somebody's getting like um, you know uh, three weeks from now, next month, something, and then. I think because I think I'm one of the last people that actually got theirs. I got mine when it popped up, you know, randomly. You know, it was like it was like you know, like it was like whack a mole. That's a perfect analogy. <laughs> that's that's what the RK one pre order for this cabinet was. It was whack a mole. It was here and there and gone. I mean, hell, I made three videos in a row, and I had something to say in all three videos. I didn't just make something up. It was like, oh, here it is. Oh, now it's gone. Oh, here it is. Now it's, it was crazy. Just trying to keep up with it was nuts. I can't imagine people that are just casual game players you know that aren't watching this stuff like a hawk you know what do you what do you do uh yeah love the love the uh love the animated stuff uh let me see let me scroll up i need some, somebody stopped in and say hi to damn it uh it's mckinney mckinney 90 where you there you are there you are how you doing man this is because if you don't know who this is he's a great artist you need to check out his channel he uh he draws live I mean, and he doesn't like or like you and I, or maybe I would do. I would just like be erasing and start over. No, he does. He just just he and he kills it. He draws these beautiful women um, from different video game genres and, and and anime genres and stuff. It's really cool, really cool. Um, I don't know, dude. I think I'm going to spend hours playing bubbles, and I won't judge you for it. <laughs> I know there's some diehard bubble fans out there, so uh, yeah. Come on, come here. Live, it's okay. He's got to go to bed. Come on, look at that. Look at that hoodie. All right, love you. Okay. All right, see you, buddy. See you later. Oh. That's my youngest. That's my youngest. Uh, and yes, I did get him the ramen uh, noodle hoodie, and he has to work because his dad got it for him. So. Uh, yes, it was towards the end of the arcade days. Uh, saw it in the movie theaters. It was often 97 to 98. 97 98. Lol. Uh, Rampage uh, with only two players possible. See, that's that, that's another thing you got to consider, right, Tony? Uh, when you're talking about a game with a very specific, you know, gameplay mechanic, you need to be able to mimic that with the control scheme you got. Obviously, Mortal Kombat is the main draw. What games go with that? What games complement that? Um, I'm trying to remember if there was a two-player rampage. I don't know if there was. Bubbles is a fun. Listen, I, I'm not necessarily bagging on Bubbles, and I, I think I, I th honestly I, did, I haven't really played Bubbles. I've I know of it's like I don't know Bubbles, but I know of Bubbles. You know what I'm saying? So uh, gotta have Bubbles. I got a lot of Bubbles fans. I have pissed off the Bubble community. Damn. I'll come up in here representing bubbles. So much wrong with the Midway Legacy cabinets. We're going to go over that, Tony. We're going to go over that. I'm going to uh, I'm going to assemble this thing, and we're going to go in depth, and we're going to look at it. Um, the games list is awesome. Yeah, I think I think it's great to awesome. You know, it's it's, it's pretty good. Um, but we've got some design issues that I've spoken on before. I've done some videos about these, and I'm still on the fence. Am I going to mod this thing? Am I going to mod this thing? Which is, I think, I think it's something we got to really discuss. So let's go into this. Am I, what, what the hell is going on? Can y'all see that flashing seizure inducing light? Okay, so when we're talking about modding, when I say modding, what am I going to do? What am I going to mod? Uh, let's go over what we like or what I like. I, obviously, if you saw my the mod that I did on my cab, I like the coin door. I think this is just going to be a sticker. And then when you got the Killer Instinct cab 
and the X-Men cab, that's going to be a 3D sort of plastic uh, mold, you know, plastic mold injected uh, piece, right? But this is going to be a decal. I like that better than the games list, especially here when you got 10 or 12 games, you know. Um, I like that. I don't. I still don't mind the. A lot of people don't like the risers. It'd be great if it was one piece, but I don't mind the risers. Uh, it, it does cut. I know they do that to cut down on the packing or the cost of the shipping because it cuts down on the overall size of the box. Uh, but I don't mind it. It kind of makes it easier to move around in some ways. Um, you know, kind of makes it easier to set up because you can set your risers exactly where you want them and then stack the cabs on them. Uh, so it, you know, and it does kind of break up the lines of the of the cab itself. And now I want you all to think about something. I want to think about this. Think about this. If you live in a, not live, <laughs> you'll live it. If you live in a basement, that's fine. But if you, if your arcades are in a basement, if you've got the sort of the, sort of the typical basement set up, I know up here in Kentucky, Cincinnati area, uh, we have a lot of basements. If you're down in the basement area and you've got all your cabs down there and you have a little flood, think about it. Your riser will get trashed, but not your cab. So worst case scenario, you got to buy new, risers that's going to suck for some of these risers especially with the with the, uh, this riser here you've got this custom graphic right but your cab isn't ruined your cab is going to be it's going to because you know this mdf sucks up water like a freaking you know like a sponge but this won't won't do that you won't have that issue so i know it's kind of like a, a crazy thing to think about but if uh if you had your cab just sitting on the ground and they got wet you're not going to just be able to take your insurance money and go buy new arcade one-ups because the way these things come and go, you may not be able to get these anymore. So that's something to think about, but, but that's just generic. That's, that's neither here nor there. The issues that I have that some other people have, have agreed with me that they have are these wings and the way they've done the control panel now being in between the side art, the side panels. Now, part of me understands why they, why they put that in the middle. Uh, of the two side panels so that they can continue to have that fake T molding and you don't break that line up because currently that's what they do. It stops. And then you have just bare MDF where the cat, where the, uh, the control panel sits and bolts down and then it continues on. So you can, you can eliminate that. You don't, you don't have that break in the molding by just continuing that. If you recess that sort of in the middle, but what the problem is with that, let's see if I can see it. No, not right here. If you go, if you look right here in this corner here, I can't, well, let me zoom. Let me see if I can. Okay, right here in this area, you can see there's a bit of a lip right there, right? Is that a half inch? Is that a quarter? Is that an eighth? You know, what, how, how, what kind of lip is that? And the reason that's important, if you clip over here real quick, if you've got a ledge that's, that's a decent, like right there, if that's a pretty decent size ledge, if you're looking like a quarter inch or a half inch or something, if it's sticking up that much, where's your hand going to go? My hand sits right in here wherever, when I'm, you know, I've got the joystick here. My hand, my wrist is right in this area here. Uh, so I'm going to be resting on that area there. Now, when this was, when the control panel sat on top and it was one plane, that was fine because it was one elevation. But now I'm going to have this, you, it's going to give you like <laughs> carp on total, but you know what I'm saying? It's going to, it's going to put a crick in your wrist. I mean, you're going to, that's going to be annoying. That's going to be a, a, a problem, I think, for long term gaming sessions. So I don't like that. It also takes the screws, assuming this, and I believe this is the same overall width, it takes these screws here and now it moves that in towards your hand a half inch. You know, the, the, the width of that, um, that side panel. So now that's moved in tighter. So now not only do you have the potential uh, problem of having this half inch to quarter inch gap or, or elevation difference between panels and your hand is resting there. Now you may even be resting on the screw. Whereas before I didn't really have that problem. Little things that you got to think about because this stuff, while looking at it now, you think it doesn't matter. Well, it's going to matter if you're playing for a long time. And when you're talking about Mortal Kombat, I mean, and you're going to have friends over, and this is a legacy cab, and it's got a bunch of games on it. I mean, you're going to play this more than you would uh, probably your Mortal Kombat cab because it's just, you know, the limited games. And then, of course, the other big thing is these freaking wings up top. These things right here. You see my curfew exhibit. Up here. Why that's so real? And everybody keeps telling me, oh, it's line of sight. If you push this out to the edge then it's going to obstruct your view of the monitor. Well, then cut these damn wings off. Oh, but they're doing it for aesthetics. They want to have the, they want to have this. Well, the, but why? 
you're trying we're trying to mimic this well if you cut this back and that that uh marquee is flush i'm still going to get that overall gist of what you're going for i still am going to get the impression that you're trying to mimic the overall the, the original size you know or, the, or that silhouette of the of the old caps i'm gonna i'm still gonna see that it just for me this it, and it's about, well, look at this view right here. Look at this angled view right here. I can't see the T in combat. So we're obstructing some of the view of the marquee. I, you know, it's, it, does, it doesn't make it, this doesn't make, this never made any sense to me when I saw this. And I thought that was pre-production sort of rendering, but that's not the case. If I'm going to mod this thing, so here, here's, here's my, my little sneak peek. And I'll know more when I assemble mine. And we can talk about it. And I can show you what I'm looking at. And I can take real measurements and see what this, you know, see how this is really going to work out. Here, once again, you, you, you're, some of the T is obscured because of that. So, so what I would do is I would, if this just, I'm assuming, like I said, I don't know. The control panel is going to sit on a ledge of some sort. And then it, you screw it down. Take washers or a spacer of some kind and put that between the control panel here and where it actually rests. And get that spaced up to where this elevation, this plane, is perfectly flat. Perfectly flat. Now, it's still not going to fix the screw issue, the screw head issue. That has to stick up because that's going to hold down your deck protector. All right? So you can't do anything about that. Not really. Not really. Um, that, that placement is locked in. You know, unless you try to fabricate, and I'll, I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to try to fabricate a new deck. But anyway, so I would I would put some spacers, some washers, shim that up, right? Get that a little higher, make that elevation the same. And then what I want to do up top, and this now this is the big thing. If you're talking about putting some spacers and some washers, that's one thing. That's that's no big deal. You can throw that in there, and if it doesn't look good, it doesn't work, you just get rid of it. I would want to bring this marquee out to the end. And the only way to do that right, guys, the only way to do that correct, to bring that out and to keep that nice and tight and to keep it all together, you've got to drill through the side art. I'm going to have to relocate. Let me see the side view. You see where this screw is here? So if we're talking about coming forward three inches, four inches, whatever that's going to be, you're going to have a hole here, which you could probably cap. But that means I'm going to have to drill a new hole here. And I run the risk of damaging the side art. So what I'm going to have to determine is, is that, is it worth it for me to get that look that I'm going after to bite that bullet, to take that chance? Now I can tape that off and just do the best I can and maybe get a small fortuner bit to get a nice clean hole and then use a drill bit to go all the way through. But that's still, I'm running a risk there. Also, I'm going to have to fabricate a new speaker control panel or speaker support panel underneath, because especially if I'm moving, if I'm moving like three or four inches, the, the, the panel that supports those speakers is going to have to be elongated severely. And then I'm going to want to retain that same look. So if I just do raw MDF, I've, I've got to treat that. I've got to paint that in a way that looks, it's going to look good. Um, and then I've got to be able to slot that or groove that or put holes in or have speaker grills or something uh, to, to, you know, ha allow the, the sound obviously to pass through the panel, but it has, it has to look good. I don't want it to necessarily look like my modification here where I've got the whole control panel is custom. I want to retain a lot of that stock look. I don't want it to appear to be out of place. So how would you do that? So that's, that's a tough one. The not so difficult part of this would be the top panel. I forget the, I forget the, the, uh, the letter of that panel, but it's a top panel. I can use some of my, my, uh, dry erase board that I use to make to make replacement panels for my RK one ups and I can just fabricate another one of those. Just cut one of those longer, obviously. It'll probably fit it fits in the slots and that'll be fine. And that will actually look good. But the problem is going to be that speaker uh, support panel. That is going to be the problem for sure. So yeah, so if I mod this thing, if I mod it, I'll do the washer thing regardless. I'll do that no matter what. I'll space that up and see what it's going to take to get that flush, and I'll let you know what, what I had to do there based on you know the thing, half inch, whatever. So whatever that whatever that is, I'll tell you. I'll let you know what that is. And then up here now, I'm going to have to probably just take the marquee loose and, and just slide that forward and see, see if it's worth all that work. 
I don't know. I'm still on the fence about that. But while I got you here, while I'm still sharing my screen, I wanted to bring this up to you also. So I, I went back to Walmart.com. You know, you know, you got to type in digital pinball to find this stuff. Uh, the only arcade one of pinball machine I see that they currently have for pre-order is the Marvel. I don't see the Star Wars anymore. I don't see the Star Wars anymore. Just the Marvel. So let me jump back over to the chat real quick. Uh, does anybody else? Um, is anybody? I mean, I know the the pinball reaction has been mixed. I think some of this stuff we knew going forward. Uh, I used to play for hours. Yeah, uh, I know a lot of this pinball stuff we knew kind of going forward with some of the um, the pictures, some of the old early reviews, like from Cool Toy and everything. But um, I, I don't know. I think that some of the quality control issues or the quality issues with some of the parts we didn't see coming. I don't know why they didn't throw timber on there. That make more sense. Wouldn't it? Let me scroll down just a little bit. I apologize. I'm not trying to uh, stardust. 727. Fla. F-L-A. Uh, good to see you, man. Hi. Thanks for stopping by, dude. I, I didn't want to rush by you. I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to say something. Um, I still can't pre-order it. Uh, which one are you talking about, buddy? You talking about uh, Midway? Because yeah, that's. I think that ship has sailed. Now there isn't. There is an option for you. You can go to. Uh, now let me. Well, I got you up here. The RC. I was told this is Willie, not Wiley. I pronounced it incorrectly. Someone corrected me. So, trying to be correct here, guys. Trying to be correct, um, or accurate, I should say. Now, if you go to this website here, R C Wheelie, um, you you should be able to. Oh, is it gone? Oh no, is it gone? Really? Is it still my cart? So the Midway uh, cabinet was available here, and. Unless I'm scrolling past it. Am I scrolling past it? I don't see it. It's not here. So this is one of the last places you could actually pre-order that. Midway Legacy. Oh, man. I'm not seeing it. So, yeah, this was one of the last places that I knew that you could actually pre-order. And as of this morning, it was it was still up. But I'm not seeing any of the legacy cabs on here now. Damn it. Ah, uh, sorry, bud. I think uh yeah. Maybe out of luck there. I don't know. Just keep your eyes peeled. Keep keep checking out those uh, websites and uh and and uh keep the faith. Don't 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 get discouraged. Uh, I'm sure there'll be another wave coming out. Or just bring the marquee out and tilt the screen back more. Dave, I, I know what you're saying. And I wish I could. Obviously, I haven't seen this yet. But if it's like the other um, the cabinets that they have, they route grooves or slots into the side panels that the that the uh, that the monitor support panel sit it rests inside of. So if I wanted to tilt that back, which I I would like to, but if I tilt that back, I'm going to expose that slot or that groove, and I'd have to take my router and cut another slot or groove in there uh, so that it could rest in there because it's going to be too wide. If you just if you just try to Put it in between the uh, the side panels without being in those slots or grooves. It's going to pop out. It's going to bulge. So I, I gotta I gotta stay there. I gotta stay within that that angle. Unfortunately, uh, but yeah. But I I'd, I'd like to. I'm gonna I'm gonna at least bring it out and just look at it and see how that looks, and see if it's worth it. Because it may you know once I get it once I get my once you get your eyes on it and I think what we're seeing are I think these are still renderings, guys. Let me go back. I th this is still a rendering, and you can tell because if you look at the buttons, let me keep going. See, that's not; those are not RK one up buttons. The proportions are all wrong. Look at the slider, the on off slider. That that's not. This is all computer rendering. So this is so this whole design is is just a rendering. We don't know exactly what it's going to look like in real life. They could have made some changes. Maybe it's not as exaggerated as it looks here. Maybe it's a little subtle, a little more subtle than that, but uh, yeah. So, so unfortunately, yeah, Wiley, RC Wiley, 
is out. But yeah, so if you go back to Walmart, it looks like this is the only one that's going to be available for pre-order. Unless it's buried in a different way and I'm going to have to look for it um, with a different keyword. But but yeah, so. Uh, there is a screw pack on eBay. Yeah, uh, replaces the cover. Oh, wait, it replaces the cover. Screws it to give a lie. So I actually said flat. Yeah, I thought about... Uh, I'll have to look on eBay and see. I've seen some of them that are a little more pronounced, but they've got like a big washer, like a beveled washer. Um, I guess you could even sort of bevel the hole itself and then get a flush mount or a, a beveled head that would be flush. That, that's definitely an option. Um, hello. How you go? Thanks for stopping by, man. Uh, our Marvel pinball has been delayed with no... Oh, really? With no date in sight. We got lucky on Star Wars from Walmart. Uh, it'll be released on May 7th. Why did they release it on May 4th? May the 4th be with you? Come on. Think about that, guys. <laughs> that could have been a marketing uh, dream. Uh, RC uh, Willie uh, charged no tax or shipping on the Atari. Gen oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but has expensive shipping for most cabs. Yeah, so if you go and you get the joystick, it's, it's free shipping. Um, I didn't realize they didn't charge tax either. But it's free shipping, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, if you go to get anything else, you're going to pay 80 bucks minimum for ground shipping. They also have a, uh, a white glove shipping, <laughs> which is like over $100, so that's a little crazy. But, but anyway, uh, yeah, if you could, if you could, smiggity mac that like button. I'd appreciate it. Pretty happy with it. Yeah, see, Snowdub, now for those of you who don't know, Snowdub has the, one of the original, uh, the Gen, I guess it's technically Gen 2. Uh, he's got that the MK cabinet uh, just waiting on Killer Instinct C, brother. Yep. Uh, Judgment Day Shooter. Everybody's waiting on that. They have announced the Killer Instinct. We're still waiting for the next shooter cab to be announced. Big Buck Hunter and Big Buck Hunter World is the only cab out there so far. RK 1UP mismanaged stock allocation for these pinballs. They've done something, haven't they, Cab Grit? They have done something. They have they have they have messed up the messaging, or their supply chains. Something something ain't right. Something ain't right. But um, I think that is about it. So anyway, so there we have it. Uh, that's where my head's at. I'm excited about mine coming in this week. I'll let you know uh, via a video or something. Uh, you can follow me on. I'm not on Twitter, uh, but I am on Instagram. I'm on Parlor um, Minds, and uh, look for me there, 19K Fox, and uh, I'll let you know either way. If there's any kind of delay, if there's any kind of you know tomfoolery or shenanigans going on, I'll let you know. And then of course, when it shows up, I'll be posting pictures. Uh, and then we'll have. Let me know in the comments section if you think that a live stream because I did a lot when I do a live stream, my webcam is okay, but when I shoot a video, I got a much better camera. So the quality is much higher. So I'm thinking about just shooting a video. Uh, maybe not a total 100% unboxing of everything step by step, every minute, every second. But maybe we do uh, Maybe we do a rough assemble of the main guts and main, main part. The stuff that is typical with RK1 up, but then we focus on some of the stuff that's different. That control panel, that marquee, and the PCB itself. Curious to see what that PCB looks like. I, I would imagine it's going to be a little bit different. Short stop 12 Hawk. Uh, how'd you like the one division ending? You know, I got to tell you the, uh, the whole, the whole series was very interesting. I didn't know what was going on. Hey, most people, <laughs> like, what, what is going on? I'm glad they released those first two episodes, uh, instead of just one and then making you wait a week for the second one. Cause uh, you really needed those first two episodes to sort of get a feel for what was going on and to get a feel for there was something weird. Something was amiss. So you needed that for sure. Uh, and then as it went along, it was still sort of, wow, this, this is weird. And then when Evan Peters showed up as Quicksilver, my mind exploded. I'm like, oh, this is how they're gonna, the X-Men are coming in and all stuff. Uh, but then the way it ended was really disappointing because, you know, Quick, Quick, uh, Quicksilver just ended up being uh, just ended up being a, a guy named Boner. <sighs> Come on, guys. Boner? You All that for a Boner joke? So he was a guy named Boner. Uh, it ended with a big light beam in the sky, like every Marvel uh, movie does. The, the big revelation was that 
Uh, they told us her name is the Scarlet Witch. We already knew that. We already knew that her, she was a Scarlet Witch. So, um, you know, I like the white vision uh, because that was true to the comics. I like I like that sort of that dichotomy uh, of of the the physical, you know, vision, you know, and then her uh, manifestation of vision and those two sort of having that philo philosophical conversation instead of just a. They did fight for a little bit, but then they had that physical. Uh, physiological or philosophical uh discussion that was kind of cool but uh but i think overall i was a little disappointed i wanted it to be more i think i wanted it seems like a waste to have evan peters play quicksilver and it just be nothing it was a waste to not have some kind of a doctor strange cameo uh or or to tie that in somehow it seemed to be it seemed to be tiny easter eggs uh, of a story that didn't really have a lot of weight to it but you know, I, I to be honest, I wasn't that into those two characters anyway. I was really intrigued at first because I didn't know what was going on. But then once you realize what was going on, uh, you know, eh, it's okay. So to answer your question, I think the ending was a letdown. I think it could have been better. I think it could have been a lot better. I think you could have teased more. Could have brought in more. You could have made. Uh, I, you know, the Evan Peters thing really got me. Because the whole internet, just people's faces were just on fire. Heads were exploding. What does this mean? Because we're all waiting for how they're going to pull the X-Men into the Marvel Universe, the MCU. And, and instead of this being sort of a way they were going to do it, it was just sort of like, eh. It was just like a little, it was something for the fans. But it really wasn't. Because the fans were like, oh, you're going to make something out of this. And then you didn't. You didn't do anything with it. You brought the guy in for nothing. Like I said, for a boner joke. So, so while the the series was good, it didn't really live up to, I think, what it could have been. And Monica Rambeau is robbed. She got robbed. That's the original Captain Marvel. Why they're trying to retroactively make her like she's got powers now? But I mean, she should have been the original Captain Marvel because if you go into the comics, that's the way it was supposed to be. One division was created to make her the most powerful Avenger and not Captain Marvel. Well, I don't like Captain Marvel, so I like that idea. But if you make a – think about the implications moving forward. I I said, you know, when Endgame came out, I said that – or actually before I saw the movie, I said I think that after Endgame, they need to shut it down. There needs to be no Phase 4. You end Endgame or you end the MCU after Endgame because they just bought all these they, – they acquired all these properties. They got, they got the X-Men back, Fantastic Four, and all that. So you 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 say we had a great ten year run, eleven year run. You shut it down and then you restart with a brand new MCU, and now you have all these characters at your disposal, and you draw from each one, and you pull, and you and you tell the stories you want to tell without limitations, without having to have Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, and we got to call them uh, enhanced humans. We can't call them mutants because leg legalities and all that. Now you can tell the story how you want to, as accurately as you want to. You know, the only ones they really don't have is Spider-Man and the Hulk. The Hulk they have, but they can't make a solo Hulk movie because of, like, I think it's Paramount or Universal, or some of the rights or whatever. They can't make one. So, um, but, and of course, Spider-Man is at Sony. But, yeah, yeah, it's kind of kind of, kind of disappointing. They could have done more with it. But, but, yeah, when you make her so powerful that she can rewrite people's DNA and change reality, even within a given space, still to be able to completely change and alter reality, uh, that's the, it's the same problem I have with magic. When you have a superhero, you got his powers and you got his weaknesses. And if you think about all the main superheroes, that was it. Even with Superman, and Superman was still he's still kind of it's it's a power that's so powerful, like magic. It, it becomes a way to just explain away everything to where the writers don't have to try real hard. But anyway, that's a long diatribe about about that. But but yeah, could have been better. How is your new display holding up? So far, so good. You can see it running right now. It's running. Uh, that's my PS2. I got Burnout 3 in there. So far, so good. It looks good. It's not washing out. It's got pretty good. Um, you know, the blacks are black, you know, so it's got uh, it's got good contrast. Um, we'll see. You know, time will tell, right? See, that thing holds up. But so far, so good. We uh, Fast movements. 
you know, I'm using the HDMI input. So it looks crisp. It looks clear. If there's any screen tearing or any kind of ghosting or any kind of weird imaging, I think I'm going to see it when you're playing fast-paced PS1 games. I'm sorry, PS2 games, even rocking a PS3 from time to time. Uh, hopefully I can find the weaknesses in this in the screen, which is kind of what I want to do. I want to see, is it really, really good? I think I'll probably end up doing like a review in a couple months. Say, hey, it's good, it's bad. Get it, don't get it, uh, whatever. But, but you know, you can't beat the installation. It's pretty simple. It is a cheap Chinese monitor, like, uh, like others have said, but, you know, uh, so is the original... You know, one that comes in your uh, that comes in your arcade one up, your 17 inch. But in any event, guys, that is my hour. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks, thanks for helping me get to 1K, a little over 1K now. Um, I'm going to keep these live streams going. Obviously, uh, I think it's a great way to cover a lot of different topics with you. And I'm going to try to get back to doing the bourbon talks. That's a Wednesday show. I've been traveling. Work schedule starts to get a little bit crazy uh, around this time of year, so so it's always kind of tough to, uh, to, uh, to to sit down and really have a good live stream with you. I can do that when I'm at home, but when I travel, uh, if you're on, if you, if I can't get a good solid Ethernet connection, Wi-Fi is spotty is hit or miss, and I don't want to give anybody a bad experience. So anyway, once again, I want to thank everybody for stopping by. I want to thank everybody for for subscribing. Uh, for liking, for commenting, comments are big on the videos. It helps get me in the algorithm and all that. Uh, it, it helps it helps grow the channel for sure. So uh, stay tuned. Thanks for stopping by. Once again, I think I've said that 15 times, maybe 16. Anyway, I'm just a grateful guy. What can I say? Uh, but anyway, I hope everybody has a great week. Don't work too hard. or hmm, just hard enough so you don't get fired. And uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll see you next time. Later. <laughs>